<laughs> I have made fire. Maybe not. <laughs> okay, so I'm strong. <laughs> about that? Hey, I have been wanting to build a uh, foundry furnace so I can start doing some uh, metal casting. And I've been looking around on the internet, uh, especially YouTube, looking for burners and designing a burner. And I found a couple that, that have worked, seemed like they work really well and are a lot of people seem to model themselves after. Um, one of them is one, and this is the one that I built. Um, it's modeled after Grant Thompson's, um, the King of Random guy. He built a burner, um, and this is his design. So I want to give him credit where credit is due. Uh, this is his design. At least that's where I got it from. I don't know where he got it from. And I'll link that at the um, down below so you can go look at Grant's burner. It's pretty cool. And actually, there's a lot of things about the burner style that I like, um, particularly the ability for me to change, um, change the amount of gas that goes into this thing with uh, just changing out a tip, a, a welding tip. So, uh, and I'm gonna show you, this is Grant's build. This is my build, um, all the parts and everything. I'll show you up in the corner here, just kind of uh, as it's running. But you saw in the opening that I've run into a problem. I cannot keep this thing burning, or at least I haven't been able to. And I am going to, I'm gonna grow here, just one second. Okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not my full stature, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm moving in the right direction anyway. Anyway, this is Grant's design, as I was mentioning. And there are two aspects of the design that, um, to control, right? You control how much gas comes in with the valve here. Uh, you really can't see that. Let me see if I can change this. How many things could go wrong while I'm trying to do this? The valve is right here, so on and, on and off. And then the other thing you can do is, on the back of his design, he's got this, um, this sort of tin can damper. Uh, allows you to regulate by just basically moving this thing in and out. You could open up the amount of air that comes into the back of, uh, of this, of what, this is basically the same kind of thing, but it comes in the back here. So, as you saw in the opening, I have not been able to keep this thing burning. I can't do anything to keep it burning. I noticed that in Grant's design, he, uh, first of all, he tells you to build it with an eight inch, one inch by eight inch nipple. Well, no, that didn't work. So I went back and watched his video and realized that he really didn't build it with an one inch, he built it with three quarter. So when I got a, a inch and a half to three quarter couple, a reducer, put in a, uh, an eight inch, three quarter inch pipe, which is what he actually shows in his build. Um, no, that didn't work either. I couldn't, I still couldn't keep it burning. So then I went over to my good friend Paul of Paul's Garage, and I started looking at his. He's got a whole different, completely different design on the on the burner that he uses, and a lot of people have used his that same design, and I assume that's where he got it from. Well, the idea is that you basically you have this pipe here, and you start and rather than, this is completely closed off back here now on this end. And you start letting air in through holes that are drilled in the side of the uh, in, in the side of the pipe. Well, and then you can adjust that by closing off. And what Paul does, he built like a, an aluminum sleeve that he could open and shut the uh, the holes with. I tried that; it didn't work. I tried putting holes closer to where the propane is coming out. That didn't work. Nothing worked. So then one night I was sitting out here with. Um, Things sort of like this. I had the three quarter inch pipe in here and it was burning out. And I thought, well, what if I just extend it? My thought was really, what if I made it more confined around where the flame is, like it's going to be in the foundry furnace? So I thought, well, I've got this pipe here. Let's just put that on the end of here. I did this and suddenly the thing started working much better. 
So now I'm scratching my head. I'm thinking, well, what in the world? That, is it a length thing? That's why it's, I've got this 12 inch nipple in here now. Um, so maybe it's called a pipe now that it's 12 inches. I don't know. Anyway, um, this is um, my attempt to just lengthen the whole thing. Well, you saw what happened, right? It burns itself out. And with this on the end of the, the three quarter inch pipe, <clears throat> it led me to believe well, what if I tried this? What if I tried putting this on the end, like so, as sort of a flare on the end? And, well, let me do that. Let me put that on here real quick, and I'll show you what happens. It's pretty amazing. Nothing like watching a guy try to peel the back off a tape. This is entertainment, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm going to just put this on. The idea of this thing is pretty close to the idea of this pipe. So, um, I guess I just wanted to see what would happen. So, I'm going to tape this on. Looks pretty centered. All right, you remember what happened, right? Without this, without this on there, it blows itself out. So let's try this again. That's with the gas wide open. Let me open up the air all the way. It burns great. So now, what does that all mean? I don't know, but I'm going to show you what I think it means. So let's let me let me do a uh, let me do a, a Casey Neistat style drawing on my desk here. I put the cam oh, don't want to put the camera above me, but yeah, it'll be the, it'll be almost exactly the same. Okay, so this is this is what I think is going on. First of all, let me let me show you the the design again. The design is basically it's a, there's a tube coming in with propane in it with a plug in the end and then a tiny hole. In my case, it's 0.035 inches um, with um, uh, Grant's, his is 0.025 inches. Um, so it, it, I mean, it found it really doesn't end up mattering what that is, but that's going to put a small stream of propane into, uh, into, the, into this chamber. Then we have uh, sort of this reducer, right? Oh, it's on the end of my pipe. We have this reducer that is going to hold, it holds the, this pipe in the center, actually, yeah, this way, and then our pipe screws into this. And here, so then we have, now we have, coming out of here, we have another pipe, right? That's, that's this guy. So, threaded pipe, this is threaded in here. Um, now, what's happening, I believe, is the propane, as I mentioned, propane's coming in this way, right? We got propane. And that's going to be squirting in here, coming down. We have air coming in the backside, air. And that's going to come around and mix with this gas. Now what I think is happening is one of two things is happening here. So this gas and air mixture is now coming out of the end of this tube. And if you're, if you're familiar with the Bernoulli effect, no, not her, him, Daniel Bernoulli, Swift mathematician and physicist, that guy. He's the guy that, uh, he's the guy who makes airplanes fly. <clears throat> if you take, a, if you take a, a wing on an airplane and it runs through the air, the air is coming across this direction, what happens is that, that air comes through here, and then it also has to go up and over. 
Well, because of the distances traveled, this air is actually starts moving faster than this air does. And uh, when you do that, you get lower pressure, you get low pressure here and high pressure here, which causes lift, which causes the thing to come up. Now, that's not exactly what's happening here, but I'm wondering is if, is this gas coming out of here, is it low pressure because of the movement and it's sucking air in? And if you remember, if you saw that when in the opening, the flame starts to kind of develop holes in it. So the cone is out here running, and all of a sudden it develops this hole out here. And I'm wondering if that's the air coming in, pushing on it, and it finally just blows itself out. That's, that's one theory. The other theory is this is moving at a fast enough rate that rather than having low pressure here, what's happening is we're developing turbulence out here as the thing as the thing's running, and we're seeing. I'm seeing this, this air turbulence coming in, and that could be blowing, coming in and blowing the flame out. Um, I don't know. So, where does this thing come into play? Well, if I put this on the end of here, what I'm doing is I'm essentially shielding the flame from all of that. And if you, if you notice, yeah, you probably didn't, but you can go back and look. The flame is actually burning down inside here. The flame isn't. The flame doesn't burn here. The flame continues to burn back here. So it's almost as if it provides a uh, a safe zone, a, a refugee city, if you want to get political, uh, an area that it, where the flame can burn without being bothered by whatever's happening out here. So that's my theory uh, on what's going on. I decided I, I decided you needed to see my smiling face after all. <laughs> Anyway, I want to tell you about a couple of things that I learned uh, just in the last couple of days that have kind of also influenced my thinking here. Uh, first of all, I went to a friend's house, a guy I work with, who's got a propane forge, and um, it's a two-burner forge. There's a video. I'm going to put a video of it right there, right there uh, while I'm talking here. And if you watch closely, what you'll see is... The flames don't start off great. They kind of go in and out, and it's almost as if one um, flame will ignite the reignite the other one if it starts to go out, and and they kind of sputter around in there. And 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 as we watched it burn for a while, what we found is, or at least what I found, is that as the forge itself heated up, as the, the space inside there started getting hot, and the air was hot inside there, maybe thinner, I don't know. Um, the flames started burning a whole lot better, and they were more stable, and they just was, was just running like it should. And then I was talking with um, with Paul at, over at Paul's Garage again, and um, and he mentioned the same thing. He said that first of all, he said his won't burn well without a flare on the end. The other thing is his burns after it's in his furnace and is running. Two people that I've seen. Now, I've seen it, and I've heard it about that. So, so my furnace is essentially going to be like everybody else's furnace. It's going to be a round can lined with cement. The burner will come in at an angle, and the flame will then rotate around um, inside, the, inside the furnace. My hope is, is that, A, as the flame is not a totally stable, that it will have enough flame here that it will reignite itself over here and kind of keep itself going. Uh, and then as it heats up, it will finally stabilize and things will just be wonderful inside there. So that's my next step. Got to get a foundry built. I got to get a foundry furnace built in the correct. I think at this point, I'm pretty good on the burner. I know what's going on. I know that it will burn um, and and it's not going to be a problem with that. I just have to figure out how to keep it burning. Anyway, let me tell you, let me show you what, uh, what this thing looks like here with, uh, with the 16th inch hole in the nozzle. It's quite impressive. You have a great day. Hang around for that, that shot. Okay, here we go. This is a, uh, the orifice has got a 16th of an inch hole. It's a little over a millimeter. Here we go.
<laughs> There's my hand. <laughs> Look how big that thing is. It's awesome. Hey, as always, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click the thumbs up button down below. It really does help. If you'd like to be notified when we publish new content, go ahead and click my channel icon to subscribe. And finally, while you're here, take some time to check out some of our other videos. Have a great day and get out there and do something new today.